This is a Saturday morning TV log from Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Welcome to another Saturday morning TV log, and this time around it's Kid Power, brought to us by Rankin Bates. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. I'm Dual, the Big D to you. This is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So this week's Saturday morning TV log is probably one of the most... Rarely remembered animated series from long ago, actually over 50 years ago. Kid Power, produced by Rankin Bass Productions. You know, the studio behind our favorite Christmas specials like Rudolph and Frosty and others. And of course, um, they had already recently produced shows for TV, including the King Kong Show and the Jackson 5. The show premiered on ABC in 1972, where that same year, they also premiered another show from the studio, and that was The Osmonds. Now, I'll talk about that in a future episode. <coughs> oh, yes. Anyway, Kid Power was based on the syndicated comic strip known as We Pals that was introduced in 1965 and created by Maury Turner. And was the first comic strip syndicated in the U.S. to have a cast of diverse et ethnic, ethnic. I'm sorry, I'm mis. I'm trying to say this. Ethnicity. Dubbed the Rainbow Gang. Now, so the show. This well, kind of thing. Of this is like a um, peanuts in ways, uh, except with more mixed characters from different. Backgrounds and, well, uh, colors and stuff like that. Now, the show features about all the kids from the actual series and what have you. Uh, now, then, I'm trying to look through all of them. Now, uh, there's there's numerous kids from here. Among the kids that do appear in this series are Nipper, an African-American boy who always wears a blue or gray American Civil War kepi, and has a dog named Jermo Lee. And actually, Turner based Nipper on himself as a child. There's Ralph, the white neighborhood bigot and ruffian of the group. Connie, an athletic white girl who frequently clashes with Ralph over his misogyny and racism, despite that she herself expresses chauvinistic and misandrist views. And she's an outspoken member of the neighborhood girls' lib organization. Let's see. Sybil, an African-American girl who is also in the Girls' Lib organization. She's a very nice and respectful young girl who has a very good relationship with her. And there's Oliver, a chubby, bookish white boy with glasses. Diz, an African-American boy who's never well his sunglasses and beret. He plays trumpet like his namesake, Dizzy Gillespie. I mean, Gillespie, excuse me. Gillespie. Uh, I keep, I'm sorry for this pronounced it. And often narrates the funky fable strips in the comics. Now let's see. I'm trying to find the others here. Let's see. Randy, who is an African American kid, he's second in command of the Rainbow Club, who is very good friends with Oliver, and has a one sided friendship with Ralph. Let's see. I'm just trying to find the ones who are in this show. Not all the kids from the strip are in this series, but they might have made brief appearances. There's um, Rocky, a Native American, a respectful, kind young boy who is very proud of his racial background. And is good friends with Randy and Nipper. And George... An Asian American of Chinese origin, a quiet young boy with a vivid imagination, who often discusses Chinese parables. 
and has a good relationship with Oliver Nipper and Jerry, who I'm about to talk. He's a Jewish kid, an upbeat, happy, loyal young man with a very big heart. Very good friends with a lot of the group. And it's shown that he might have feelings for Sybil. Well, maybe I'm not sure about the show, but I'm, I'm going to get to that in just a moment. And there is Wellington, who is a hip young boy, who is mainly showing this. It's shown in an earlier strip that he wears glasses underneath his bangs. Now, of course, she de and another one who appears in the series, but that, well, doesn't really speak because it's a deaf mute, and we don't know the race she's in. A respectful young girl with a very kind heart named Sally. She appears in the layer strips and also in this series, but not voiced or anything. Anyway, uh, now then, Rankin Mace produced the show with animation in Japan at Top Craft. Now, all of Turner's characters were featured, as I mentioned, united through the coalition the characters dubbed Rainbow Power. According to the Cy Encyclopedia of a American Anime Intelligence Shows, it says the same broad ethnic mix as the comic, make it one of the first television animation programs aimed at children to accurately reflect the racial diversity of America and thus providing for many others to follow. There were a total of 17 episodes produced and aired when it premiered in, on September 16, 1972, and it ended in January of the following year. And then it continued in reruns, and then the following year, a few new episodes that were unfinished during the first season aired on Sunday mornings, combined with reruns until September of 1974. Now then, I will say that, though, this show is very hard to find. There is one, ep one full episode available on YouTube. Unfortunately, it's in black and white from a film strip. Just look it up. It's the actual very first episode of the series, as a matter of fact, where they do kind of a mixed um, fun take on Uncle Tom's Cabin. It was pretty good. The show features um, music as well, just like other shows that, that were out, like the Archie series. And other shows which came out the same year, including Falber and the Cosby Kids and the Brady Kids, which also premiere on ABC. Oh yeah, and, and let's not forget the Jackson 5 and the Osmonds. Now, our, now we have our voice acting cast that includes Donald Full of Love voicing Diz and Randy. Now... Now he's he was actually well known for playing well well most people may know him as Goldie Wilson of Back to the Future and Goldie Wilson the Third in Back to the Future Part Two. And he's also done some others uh, as well. He actually recently voiced young Michael Jackson in the Jackson Five animated series, which of course, as I've mentioned, was a, was recently done the previous year by Rankin Bass. He also lent his voice to another series animated series, Emergency Plus Four, which was an anime take of the drama series Emergency. He's also appeared on other shows including Hill Street Blues. Not, not Hill Street. I'm, there's a High Street Blues. I'm sorry. My mistake. The Fall Guy. What's Happening Now? Major Dad. Uh, plus a lot of other shows. I apologize. I misread that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yes. Now, um, Michelle Johnson voiced Sybil, Charles Kennedy voiced Nipper, Gary Shapiro voiced Jerry and Wellington, Jay Silver Hills Jr., yes, um, yeah, son to Jay Silver Hills, you may know best as Tono for, of TV's The Lone Ranger, played the, voiced the character of Rocky, Greg Thomas voiced Oliver, Jeff Thomas voiced Ralph, April Winchell, who is the daughter to Paul Winchell, who, of course, was already big on, t on voice and anime characters at the time, voiced Connie, and Carrie Wong voiced George. 
Now, again, as I've said before, only one full episode is available. It's the first episode. Again, it's on a film strip, and it's unfortunately black and white. But however, you can find the series intro in full color and what have you. However, if you'd like to see what it was looked like. Now, let's see. The music for this series was done by Perry Botkin Jr., and songs were written by him and Jules Banks. While its theme song was actually done by, that was produced by Mike Curb and a group called, um, well, I can't even remember what it's called. Ugh. I apologize for this, everyone. The Curb Stones, here it is. Yes, because the. Kid Power actually got a soundtrack album released on MGM Records, and the Curb Stones worked on it. Well, did the songs for it. Of course, um, it it did have a Mike Curb involved, who had recently worked on the music for other for previous Saturday morning shows, including Hot Wheels and the Chattanooga Cats, both of which were recent hits for ABC. And I can give you a look at some of what some of the kids looked like if you've never seen the series. Here's a, a little bit of um, animation shell here of what you what some of the characters actually look like. And if you've never actually read the comics or what have you, then well, you'll know what they look like. Here it is. Now the, the kids you saw were from left to right. Was Randy? That was the African American kid. You saw um, the guy in the blue PJ looking things was Ralph, and of course you saw Oliver and. The girl there was Connie. If you want to see what the air characters look like, just look, watch the first episode, and if you weren't too thrilled with the black and white feel to it, again, you can find the intro in full color and what have you. Unfortunately, I don't know where if this was actually really, I don't think this was really some physical media, and it's tough to find it and what have you. So I'm afraid this black and white film strip is your only chance of finding Kid Power on YouTube, so check it out if you'd like. Might not be the best quality because it's on a film strip and what have you, but you might have a little fun with check it out. But anyway, that's about all I can tell you about this show. But if you remember the Wee Pals comic strip, then you may want to check this show out. So, tell me what you thought about Kid Power in the comment section below. And if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big Bean Nation. And we'll have another video coming up soon. I'm not sure what it's going to be. It's going to be a spoiler-free review, so stay tuned for it. So if you in and if you enjoy this, check out my reviews for these other Saturday morning TV logs. In the upper left-hand corner is the, the Saturday morning TV log I did for the Brady Kids, which was one of my earliest Saturday morning TV logs. The upper right-hand corner is the Saturday morning TV log I did on Faber and the Cosby Kids. And the bottom left-hand corner is the Saturday morning TV log I did on the Jackson 5 animated series. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc. As well as the Saturday morning TV log, then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and next week's Saturday morning TV log is... CBS Story Break. So until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.